we have uh, some variety here. We have uh, folks, so good morning for most of us this morning and welcome. Welcome to everyone, wherever you are. And we have a nice distribution of, of folks, mainly obviously folks in our, in our local area, but many joining us from California and Charlottesville, well, Charlottesville, Virginia, and, um, and down in, uh, in, uh, in, in Spokane, uh, Spokane, Washington, and uh, Cassie is in Hilton Head, uh, South Carolina. And, uh, and uh, let's see, uh, Laura in Eugene, Oregon, Amy in Massachusetts, and uh, Charlotte in New York City. I was going to say some of you are in Charlotte, but you're Charlotte in New York City. That's great. Welcome. Welcome to you all. And uh, let's see, any others um, missing, if I'm missing anyone, welcome to everyone. So uh, very, very warm welcome and just a quick introduction. Um, I'm Hugh Byrne, I teach with the Insight Meditation Community of Washington here in the Washington DC area. And the class itself is, part of uh, an offering of the Center for Mindful Living, which is physically located in Tenley Town, Washington, DC, but obviously all of our offerings for the last nine months or so have been, have been uh, online, but there, we still have the space. And uh, so the Center is part of the larger Insight Meditation Community of Washington. And, uh, and so, um, so very warm welcome. And I know, uh, you know, where I talked about this over the over the months, uh, different different ways, and um, just recognizing really to as we begin that just at the, I think we're all holding a lot, you know, at this at this time, whether it's in our own personal lives. Um, you know, some of you know, some some folks are living under very challenging conditions. You know, economically, and um, others, you know, um, just anxiety and fear around health and around loved ones. Maybe some of us have even lo lost uh, loved ones. Um, and for for some, it's not so much. Uh, personal experience in that in the immediate sense you know in terms at least of the health area but in um or maybe even in the kind of economic area of jobs and business and all of that but we're all living in all of us here in the u.s are living in this very unusual unusual unprecedented time you know where we we had an election uh, a month ago but there's still claims claims i'll put that in in quotes of uh, that something fishy happened and that the, the real winners of the election are not winners and i'm not gonna i'm not gonna go into that obviously there's lots of things that could be talked about and in other times we find good spaces to share around that but just to reflect that that it's not an easy time to be holding that to be holding questions around you know the 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 fragility of American democracy is how I would put it in a broad sense, which probably no one in our lifetimes has had to really think about seriously. And now I think really we are being called upon, you know, to, to reflect on on what it means to to be of a democracy and, and what it means to be, you know, what it would take not to be one. And I think just just to name that and just to kind of recognize that the time is, I certainly experience it myself, uh, is a really, um, a really challenging one. And then even with putting aside the, uh, putting aside the kind of the political moment that we're in and will be in, in some way or other for the next, I believe, 39 days. Um, and not that it ends then, but, you know, we get into at least we will be in a new, a new period. 
but just looking at the just looking at the virus, and uh, we're coming up to um, to three hundred thousand people who are alive at the beginning of the year and who are not with their families and will not be with their families for the holidays or for the and ever again, you know, and they're just the recognizing just the human. Um, the human cost of of the of the pandemic, and also, obviously, what has been done and what has not been done, as part of that as well, and holding all of that, and you know, recognizing that we're we're part of a global community. We're sharing this not just in the in the U.S. but in 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 the world right now, and never really. And I don't probably in most of our lifetimes have never experienced anything quite like this where you know the world together has been going through this this real upheaval and obviously well we can also be very hopeful i think um perhaps optimistic about the the uh, the vaccine vaccines uh, plural um and the their potential for kind of getting us out of this you know time we've been living in for the last nine months and um but even then you know it's unlikely to be it's gonna it's likely to be at least six months before at least six months before we're even if even if things go well before we get to what we might call the other side or at least the beginning of the other side i think of that thing that um what what Winston Churchill said after the Battle of Britain, he said, it's not, it's not the end. It's not even the, the beginning of the end. It's maybe the end of the beginning. And, and maybe with getting to the, the vaccine, we're getting to the end of the beginning, but we're not at the end in kind of similar, similar terms. And, and so our lives will continue to be you know, somewhat in, in, in upheaval for the months ahead, whatever happens, and whatever happens in the, in the kind of in the political arena as, as well is likely to be turmoil and some, to some level of, of, of upheaval. And I just want to name that because it's easy for us, it's so easy for us to be, even in times when, when everything is changing, we have a great capacity as humans to adapt and that's a great thing that we are adaptable, that we can work with change. But we can also, the kind of downside is we can become unconscious, you know, and not recognize, you know, what, what's happening. And we can, and through habit, we can, we can have the habit of pushing things down and kind of not, not really feeling them and fully opening to them. And we can pay a price for that. You know, we may, you know, sometimes we need to do that just to get through a hard period. But if we do that for a long time, it really has a cost. We pay a price in our physical well-being, in our health, in our psychological and emotional well-being as well. So I think it's important to name it so that we so that we do really kind of check in with ourselves and and make sure that we are taking care of ourselves, you know, and one really important part of taking care of ourselves is precisely what we're doing here today, which is taking, you know, that time, you know, taking creating the clearing in the dense forest of our lives as Martha Postlethwaite's um, poem puts it, you know, where we, where we do come into, where we do consciously pause in, in the busyness, in the, in the habitual, you know, often reactivity of the way we live our lives, the busyness, the intensity. And we pause and we pay attention, we come back to our breath, we come back to our bodies. And we just kind of recognize what am I, what am I seeing? What am I noticing? And we can do that in a lot of other ways as well that are healthy and helpful, taking walks and getting exercise and going to the gym. Let's hear it for Nick. Go, 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 Nick, and all those who are missing the gym or going to the gym or own gyms or whatever to um, recognize them among all the 
or the others who are going through a hard, hard time. And, um, and so, you know, what I want to reflect on is um, what I've been trying to do over these recent weeks is to take some time to, um, to remember and to explore resources that are available to us that help us to navigate and cope with and respond to and build resilience in the face of everything that we're going through. What supports us, what helps us in these, you know, what can be particularly helpful in these times. And in the, in the last few weeks, I've spoken particularly about three, three resources, three skills, three qualities. Um, maybe they don't all have the same name that captures them all, but, but one is um, the power of awareness, you know, the power of just coming into awareness of our experience, particularly when we're caught up in things, we're, we're caught up in reactivity, or we're caught up in fear or anxiety, to be able to just recognize it and to come home to ourselves, you know, to create the space to do that just come back and take a breath and recognize, okay, I'm really, I'm really tense or I'm really angry or I'm really anxious right now. Just, just, just the power of awareness to do that. And that, that, you know, that's a very, you know, a, a, a consistent and con really constant theme that we come back to is the power of awareness. The second is um, the power of, of gratitude, you know, particularly when we're you know, we get, we get, we get into forgetting mode, you know, forgetting what we have and being caught up in, you know, fear or getting caught up in, um, focusing on what's wrong, what we lacking, what we need, what we don't have, you know, sometimes this can be a kind of a craving or even an addiction to, you know, you know, getting something that will make us happy or give us what we want or give us comfort. Or it can be just, just a kind of neediness we have or a wanting we have. Or sometimes it's a kind of wanting things to be different. And then the, just the power of coming back to recognize what we already have. And, and I've, I shared how gratitude is one of the most powerful practices for resilience for well-being, for emotional happiness, well-being. And I spoke last week about the power of self-compassion as a res resource, resource or resource. Um, how, how it's very easy to be caught up in judgment, again, focusing on what's wrong, often focusing on what we're doing that's not good or not right or bad or hard, you know, and we judge ourselves. And so it can be particularly, um, a, a particularly powerful when we are caught up in, you know, judging ourselves, criticizing ourselves, um, you know, where the inner critic is strong, you know, we're kind of have the, have the stick out as it were to kind of keep ourselves in line, just to come back to, <coughs> I'm sorry, I lost, lost your cat's attention there, Carolyn, that uh, he or she was very, very, very focused for a while. <laughs> but um, to come back to self-compassion, to come back to, um, to kindness to ourselves, I, I think it's, it's hard to overemphasize the importance of kindness, of self-compassion, of kindness to ourselves and to kindness to others in this period. So it can be self-compassion, it can be the broader, um, broader quality of kindness, because it helps us come back to our hearts. And when we come back to our hearts, we're not caught up in, you know, in, in reactivity and in negativity or in you know, in that kind of fight or flight that we easily spend so much of our time in. And so coming back, the more we can open our hearts, the more we can come back to our hearts, the more we step out of reactivity, 
like that bumper sticker, you know, if you if you lived in your heart, you'd be home right now, something, something like that. You know, it's a, a nice one, just a reminder that that we, we can we can always find a home in our heart, but we have to remember. And what I want to focus on today is um, the theme I want to um, focus on is um, the power. Another resource is a power of saying yes to our experience. Meeting all that's arising in the body and in the heart and in the mind with acceptance and without without judgment, without resistance. So I, I think of this as saying yes to what is, saying yes to what is. Um, it's a way of looking at our experience. It's a way of being with our experience that leads to well-being and to freedom. So the power of saying yes to what is. So as I'm talking about saying yes to what is, you know, and necessarily talking in words and concepts, etc. You might keep a good proportion of your mind on what is your experience right now? You know, what, what's happening for you in the body, in the heart, in the mind? Is it, you know, are you feeling relaxed and comfortable? Just checking in with that. Are you feeling settled? Are you feeling calm? Are you feeling joyful? Are you feeling peaceful? Are you feeling, you know, a little disconnected, a little, um, you know, maybe you're tired or maybe you're feeling restless or maybe underlying things, there's an anxiety, maybe a free flow, floating anxiety, or might be some, some fear and worry, you know. And this, it, all, it can all be here and it can all be included. Um, and the invitation is just while, while I'm talking and obviously when we go into the meditation, just to, to pay attention to what's present and see if you can allow what's here to be here, to say yes to what is. So we can say that we can see saying yes to what is as part of the Buddha's teachings on suffering and the end of suffering, you know, part of the Four Noble Truths. And it comes particularly as part of the path to end suffering, which is the fourth of the Noble Truths. There's suffering, the existence of suffering, there's the cause of suffering in clinging, you know, holding on or pushing away, you know, that leads us to this experience of suffering or unsatisfactoriness. And then there's the end of suffering. What happens when we let go, when we find a way of letting go and finding freedom. And that freedom is kind of the end of the path, ab complete freedom, you know, that the Buddha points to as possible. For most of us, it's probably not complete freedom, but it is freedom, some relatively, some relative experience of freedom that we get when we, you know, when we see that we're holding on, but but see, oh, this doesn't hurt, doesn't serve me to hold on, you know, to be angry with that person. What if I just let that go and let it be and relax and just al allow myself to open? And if I can do that, I can find I can find some freedom. You know, I often come back to Arjun Chah, the great Thai teacher of the 20th century, who said, let go a little, you'll experience a little freedom, let go a lot you'll experience a lot of freedom. Let go completely and you'll experience complete peace, complete freedom. So it's a kind of a, a, a spectrum. It's not one thing. It's, it's like letting go a little, experiencing a little. And, if, and there is this possibility that the Buddha talks, speaks to and taught from that, that we can experience complete freedom. You know, when there's the deepest possible seeing and knowing, then there's the deepest possible freedom. There's, there's complete, complete freedom from suffering. He says, in this very life, and Arjun Chah says, your struggle with the world will be at an end. Your struggle with the world will be at an end. That if once, if we really let go completely, there's an ending um, 
there's an ending of the struggle. We're no longer feeling we have to, you know, using a metaphor, rearrange the deck chairs on the Titanic, as it were, you know, just kind of moving things around to make things feel a little better for us. Am I okay now? Am I better now? Am I better now? That we can actually experience a kind of a deeper, or a, a teacher I resonate with right now, I mean, these times, um, Rob Berbea speaks of as a, um, an inner reservoir of well-being, that, that, that kind of finding freedom. The more we, we experience that freedom, the more we can come back to really a reservoir of freedom, well-being and happiness. And so, um, so, the, um, so the, end of, the end of suffering, you know, that's possible. Um, and, and, the, and the fourth noble truth is that there's a path to the end of suffering, a path of training in ethical behavior, ethical conduct, um, in wisdom, in cultivating wise, wise seeing of how things are, wise intention, cultivating wisdom. And then the third basket of these teachings of the Eightfold Path is uh, training the mind. And so saying yes to what is, is part of training a mind, is part of the training of the mind in mindfulness, wise mindfulness, wise concentration, and wise effort. It's, say, it's part of, of being present. So saying yes to our experience. Um, Is part of is part of the, the core teachings really of, of the Buddha, part of the Buddha's teachings on suffering and the end of suffering. You know, I come back to this because I find myself, and I've spoken about I, I spoke about this briefly in a kind of broad generic terms at, in, in welcoming everyone, but just naming kind of the time that we're living in. And I find myself in my own practice and in my own life, you know, just like I'm sure everyone here, dealing with, you know, my own expression of what Zorba the Greek called the full catastrophe, you know, just the kind of the, the good, the bad and the ugly, you know, just the, this life, this, this being human. You know, each one of us has our own kind of version of it and, you know, for you, it might be, you know, your own personal health challenges. For somebody else, it may be worry about your, an aging parent. For somebody else, it might be wondering if they'll still have their job in a month or if they'll be able to pay their mortgage or their rent. Um, for somebody else, it may be, um, you know, wondering whether, you know, what's going to come of these, you know, what's going on in the political world over the next 39 days and how this is all going to unfold and what it's going to mean for, you know, obviously each one of us, but what it's going to mean for us collectively and for our world. What's it, what's it going to mean for climate change? What's it going to mean for, for immigrants, uh, you know, wanting to come into the, to the country? What is it going to mean for for, for COVID and, and dealing with the coronavirus. And um, so we all have our own uh, kind of expressions of, of things. And, you know, I, in my own experience, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I experienced some sadness of not, not feeling it would be wise to go visit my daughter and her family and my grandkids, you know, I'd really love to see them for the holidays. And, you know, really want to and actually have been visiting, but just with 3000 people a day dying and hospitals being filled to overflow and, and you know, um, intensive care beds being less and less available. I, I see, you know, even though I think I would stay healthy, I don't think, I think it's a collective responsibility to, to just be wise and, and, and take wise action, even though it, it's not kind of what I would want to do in this time. And I'm sure many, many of us have had exactly, you know, very, very similar things come up. And, and it's hard, it's difficult. It's difficult to be with the emotions and with the 
you know, with uh, making those kind of choices, but, you know, feeling that it's it's a wise the wisest step to take and all of the other things you know i've mentioned of you know how it how it is for some it may be loneliness you know if 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 they if of just not being around loved ones or not being around friends um having to be being feeling isolated um you know all of these, um, all of the things um, going on, and for and for myself, I find, you know, I do get, um, you know, I've been, I care very much about the, um, you know, the larger world, you know, the world, um, you know, the suffering of the of the world that may not be my own may only my own piece of it may only be a very small piece so it's not as though i'm i'm you know i'm feeling it in a personal way but i feel it as i'm sure many and probably most of us here feel when you know children get separated from their families and from the their parents at the borders that feels i experience that as suffering you know as part of that collective suffering you know the suffering of of those dying and um and the the suffering of those losing their jobs and the suffering the larger suffering around um around climate change and what we're we're not doing and that we're not doing enough fast enough around that um, and i care deeply about these issues and you know i've talked i've spoken about how how much difference it makes and um you know the outcome of the election what a what a difference um what a difference that makes and will make but but still you know things are very much in upheaval right now. And even, you know, what I would see as the best case scenario is not a rosy picture, you know, it's a, it's a hard road to hoe, road to hoe for, you know, however things turn out in the next, you know, in the coming month or months or six months or more. And so, Holding all of that, what I come back to is the, uh, what I find an incredibly powerful practice, and that is to say yes to what is. Um, you know, when aversion comes up in, in me around, you know, the, what's happening in the political world, what's being done, and things that I feel are unconscionable, um, I feel that as a version and my mind goes easily into blame and, you know, seeing the people doing what I disagree with as bad people or wrong. And I see what comes from that as separation and suffering. And, um, and for myself, it doesn't serve me to, to, to create that suffering. And so what I have been doing and what I continue to do is just an invite the power of saying yes to my experience. And the invitation to, that we'll be exploring today is for each one of us to say yes to what your version of, you know, your expression of Zorba's full catastrophe you know, how is that manifesting for you? Where are you feeling? Where are you experiencing suffering in, in these times? You know, and it could be, you know, it can be arranging from, you know, feeling confused or feeling overwhelmed, feeling stuck, feeling lonely, feeling sad. Um, all of these, you know, mind states and emotions um, it's easy for us to get caught up in them. You know, if we get, if we experience anger, where it easily goes to is what I've just spoken about is, it goes into blame. It goes into creating the, the other, you know, the person doing those bad things. And then the separation comes. Or with sadness, 
you know, if we, we could feel the sadness, but easy, easily we can get hooked into sadness as, as a story of like, oh, I'm sad. Oh, things are going so badly for me. And then rather than feeling the sadness, what we get caught up in it is the story of the sadness. What I spoke about some weeks ago is the second arrow. You know, the sadness is just the arrow of, of like, this is life. You know, if we experience loss, we feel sadness. But if we get caught up in it, if we hold on to it, then we experience the second arrow. And the second arrow is almost always a story that we add on to the first arrow. You know, it's the story of this shouldn't be like this. Why is this happening? Why are they doing this to me, to us? You know, and, and in that in that separation we experience um, we experience suffering and it's the suffering that we can do something about the first arrow is typically is just life showing up you know the thing that we might not have wanted to happen shows up and if we meet that with resistance or we turn it into a story um, then we suffer so saying yes to what is, is a way to avoid that suffering. It's a way to, to take, really it's a way to take, take refuge in the truth, you know, to take refuge in, in the Dharma. You know, this is the second of the Buddha's refuges, the refuge in the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha. The second one is, is this taking refuge in the truth. It's saying, this is how things are. It's, it's acknowledging that what we're experiencing, if it's painful and difficult, is to say, yeah, this is painful. I feel it. I feel it as anger. It hurts. I feel it, that pain in me. I feel that sadness. I feel the grief. I feel that sense of being overwhelmed. I feel that as pain. I feel that as, as, as unsatisfactory, as, as suffering. Um, and can I say yes to this? Saying yes to what is, is really, it's not, it's, a, it's you know, Tara Brock speaks of it as radical acceptance. You know, radical acceptance. From the, from um, Radix root in Latin, deep rooted acceptance of our experience. So it's not heart, heart, half hearted acceptance. It's not like, oh yes, I'll say yes to this as long as it doesn't last more than two and a half minutes. You know, that's, that's a kind of bargaining mind. And we get into that sometimes. I don't like this and I'm, I'm prepared to be with it, but it needs to be gone by 11.15. You know, and that's not what I'm talking about, not what we talk about when we say yes to what is. It's really, it's really wholeheartedly opening to what is here, what is present. Because um, if we don't open to the truth of our experience of what is, what we will inevitably be doing is we'll be responding from a place of contraction, of aversion, of reactivity, maybe from anger or judgment and blame. And the outcomes will not be helpful when we do that. So the invitation, and again, just checking in with your experience right now, is just to say yes to this. Say yes to what's present. It's what the Jesuit philosopher and writer Anthony de Mello called absolute cooperation with the inevitable. And I like that phrase. If you think about it, absolute cooperation with the inevitable. We're, we're cooperating completely with what is unavoidable. And if we don't cooperate absolutely with what's unavoidable, we will suffer because it's unavoidable that it's here, you know, what's here right now. If you're feeling restless right now, or you're feeling sad, or you're feeling lonely, that's what's present, that's what's here, you know. And, and, and the invitation is not to resist what you're experiencing. 
Um, what you can do something about is how you meet that, how you meet the experience. That's the, that's the, the miracle, if you like, or if you like, the magic of mindfulness of the Dharma is that how we meet our experience actually transforms what our experience is. It actually changes what our experience is. I talked some about this in a recent class. It's a, you know, it's in a, simplest, a simple way, you know, if we've got our tendencies from the past, you know, we've got whatever it might be in our past that makes us feel lonely if we're on our own. You know, we, for the mind to turn, turn alone into lonely. You get that d distinction, right? Alone is just alone. Alone is, is just a fact. Lonely is a story about the fact, right? It's like I'm alone and lonely is it shouldn't be like this. I don't like this how I am. You know, alone is the first, right. c can be, doesn't have to be. Alone could be the first arrow, you know, if it's painful. Alone could be great. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm on the beat. I'm, doing, I'm, you know, I'm doing what I like to be doing. But sometimes alone can be like I'm on my own. And um, maybe it's not what I wanted. But but if I don't add the story to it, I'm not lonely. You know, it doesn't turn into a second arrow. So, so cooperating with what we can't avoid, saying yes to what is, that's the, the invitation. And what I wanna do in a couple of minutes is to move into a meditation. But I, before I do that, I want to, <clears throat> I want to just name two, um, two obstacles that people see to this practice. There may be other obstacles as well, but um, two that, you know, that are, are, are pretty common ones to, to this saying yes to what is. Um, sometimes it's misunderstood as condoning bad things you know, saying yes to what is. Sometimes people can hear it as like, well, does this mean I should stay in an abusive relationship? You know, it's that notion that somehow saying yes to what we're experiencing means we're saying this is good what is happening. And, and what I want to be clear about is, you know, just as, you know, it, I wouldn't say to anyone, you should stay in an abusive relationship or that I'm not, I'm not gonna say it's okay that children are separated from their families at the border, you know, and, you know, for weeks and months and years, at, you know, um, that that's not okay. That's not the acceptance that we're talking about. What we're really talking about with saying yes to what is, with this kind of radical acceptance, this non-denial is, is really saying yes to the truth. We're saying about, about an abusive, a, a relationship, a harmful relationship, the yes is yes to the truth. And the yes to the truth is to say, this is happening. That's what we're saying is, we're saying this is happening. And we're saying yes, that fear, the fear is here, it's saying yes to the fear and opening to that fear and allowing that fear and allowing all that's coming up. But it doesn't in any way say yes to staying in the relationship or yes, this, these policies should continue. And that's a really, I think, important because sometimes people can hear it as, oh yes, it's okay. It's okay that these people are doing this. It's okay that you know who is, is doing what you know who tends to do. Um, or whoever you know who may be. Um, so we're not, it's not about condoning, it's about allowing what we're feeling, what we're experiencing to be here, to let it be, to let it come, to let it go. Um, it's acknowledging the truth of what we're ha what's happening. It's not being in denial. Um, 
it's it's accepting the truth of our experience and then from the truth then we can say okay what is what is a wise thing to do if it's a, an, a harmful relationship obviously it would be to 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 change that situation do something about changing it but it has to come from the recognition of what is the yes to to what is another related objection sometimes comes up that that it will won't it lead to inaction or won't it lead to us being indifferent or unconcerned about things if i say yes to what what's what i'm experiencing will it will it lead me to to not do anything about a situation and again in some ways this overlaps a lot with what i just said about about a condoning it's kind of another version of it but another expression of it but really it's the contrary to this when we open to the truth of what's happening what we're experiencing without resistance then what happens is space tends to um, open up so we see things more clearly because we're not in that contracted place it's when we're in that contracted place that we tend to not know how to act wisely because we get caught up in tunnel vision we get in this kind of defended mode in this fight or flight and when we get locked in that we tend not to see even the range of things that are possible but when we say yes to what is then then things open up and we see connections more easily we see possibilities options open up for us so so there's a wisdom as well as a compassion in saying yes to what is saying yes to our experience um, and so what i would like uh, what i would invite us to do is to go into a meditation and I'll invite us to kind of do a, a simple practice in this meditation and just see how it, you know, see what comes up for you, just being open about how, however it unfolds. Here's a, um, just share this before we go into the meditation. This is from um, Anne Morrow Lindbergh, and she's talking about it in relation to pain, but it speaks to um, speaks to other kinds of pain and suffering as well, not just physical pain. But here she's mainly, I think, focused on the on the physical. Um, she says, "Go, go with the pain. Let it take you." Open your palms and your body to the pain. It comes in waves like a tide. And you must be open as a vessel lying on the beach. Letting it fill you up. And then retreating, leaving you empty and clear. With a deep breath, it has to be deep, as deep as the pain. One reaches a kind of inner freedom from pain, as though the pain were not yours, but your body's. The spirit lays the body on the altar. The spirit lays the body on the altar. So come into a, a relaxed posture, comfortable sitting in a way that's relaxed and at the same time alert. It takes some moments to make any adjustments in your posture. So you're sitting with the back straight, your shoulders relax, your hands in your lap or on your knees, chest open so you can breathe easily. Close your eyes if you're comfortable with your eyes closed.
Letting your attention drop out of the thinking mode down into the body. Feel the contact of your body with the chair or the surface beneath you. You might connect with your breathing, maybe invite the breath to deepen. Maybe take a few longer, deeper breaths. Filling the lungs, filling the chest as you breathe in. Releasing, letting go as you breathe out. Deep, full in-breath as though you're inflating a balloon. As you breathe out. Letting the body settle, letting the awareness settle into the body, the breath, this being here. Letting the breath settle into its natural rhythm whenever you're ready, whenever you're comfortable, just coming back to a natural breath, inviting a smile if that's helpful to you. Letting the smile come, come back down into the body. Just letting yourself be here with a, a sense of ease. Nowhere you need to be to go. Just opening to what's present right now. For this practice, I invite you to begin by bringing to mind a situation that maybe is calling for your attention right now, maybe some difficulty you're having, maybe with a loved one or a family member or a friend or a colleague. Or maybe a situation where you're worried or anxious about something about yourself or your health or your well being or your overall situation. Something that's challenging, that's difficult. Maybe the larger situation in, the society, in society or in the world. Maybe fears you have. Could be a sense of being overwhelmed by everything, feel feeling too much. Just something that that feels hard. Maybe it's not right now. Maybe it's something that was there recently. See if you can bring something into your mind, into mind, and into your awareness. And if you can, just allow yourself to feel, feel what's most, what's most difficult, what's most challenging or painful about this situation. And get as close as you can to the center of what feels, feels difficult, what feels painful.
you know, it could be a strong emotion, anger, sadness, or grief, or something that feels bad or wrong, something you're afraid or worried about, or something you're believing. As much as you can, just sense into the feelings that are present in the body, maybe in the stomach, in the chest, the face. Allow yourself to feel them. And now, just to begin this practice, consciously bring to this experience or these experiences a feeling of no, of saying no to what's here right now, what's difficult, what's painful. Feel that no, if you can, in your body. It's that sense of saying no to this. You feel it in your emotions, say no to Say no if there's sadness. How does it feel to say no to it or to the anger? No. Feel that strong sense of no. Feel how it is to kind of push away, to resist what you're feeling. Just take a few moments to just bring this quality, this kind of attitude of no. It is an attitude, a no, saying no. And notice, what does it feel like in your body to say no like this? Does it feel calm, peaceful? Does it feel easy? Does it feel tight, tense, contracted? Stay with this feeling, notice how it is. How does it feel in the emotions? As if you feel connected or warm, a loving when you feel, experience the no? Would you feel more separated or disconnected? So just being aware. How does the no feel in the body? How does it feel in the heart? How does it feel in the mind? And let yourself feel it, let yourself experience that, that sense of no. And then when you're ready, maybe take a couple of deeper breaths. Come back to kind of a more neutral feeling. Settling into being here, relax into your body, coming back, coming into some sense of balance. And now, whenever you feel ready. Bring up again the same situation, that difficult or painful, challenging situation. Feel how, how you experience it in your body when you bring it, bring it up, bring it to mind. How it feels in your mind. 
what comes up in your emotions. Allow yourself to feel whatever, whatever comes up, whatever's coming up. Now though, meeting it with a quality and with an attitude of yes. How is it to make space for this bodily feeling, maybe tightness or tension? How does it feel to say yes to any difficult, painful emotion that's present? How does it feel to breathe into the feeling with a, with a quality of yes? Wholehearted quality of saying yes to what is here. If it's helpful, you could think, think of yourself as a Buddha, as the Buddha or a Bodhisattva, as a wise being, if it feels difficult to say yes. Imagine them opening with a yes to whatever, whatever's here. Saying yes to the feelings with kindness and with acceptance. meeting whatever is here with gentleness, with kindness, saying yes, yes to this feeling, yes to this other feeling. If resistance or aversion or contraction come up, see if you can say yes to the resistance, to the aversion. Let the resistance be as large as it wants to be, but let it be held in this space of yes, this quality, this attitude of yes. Yes to any fear or hurt or anger you may be feeling. What's it like to say yes? Yes to what is. Notice what comes up in the body and in the emotions and the mind when you say yes. Do you feel tighter? Do you feel tense? Annoyed? Do you feel peaceful? Calm, at ease? See what happens when you bring the, the power of yes to difficult emotions and mind states and bodily feelings. What happens to your heart when you say yes? A wholehearted yes. Can you say yes to this, this feeling, this emotion, this pain? And you say yes to all that you're feeling right now. Can you make the space of yes large enough to experience everything? All that's going on at this time in your life. Can that be held in a, a spirit, kind of a container of, of yes?
resting in the yes, the yes to what is. This is from Wendell Berry, six Sabbaths, 2001. Sit and be still until in the time of no rain, you hear beneath the dry winds commotion in the trees, the sound of flowing water among the rocks a stream unheard before, and you are where breathing is prayer, and you are where breathing is prayer. So in your own time, coming back into the group, and if you're ready, Emily, to lead us, thank you, in some, some mindful movement. Take a moment to stand on your feet, the soles of your feet, and just sway from side to side. And then open up into the space around you, allowing a twist, bringing your arms to shoulder height to allow the upper back to move. And then lowering your arms and making the circle smaller. Coming into mountain pose. And then turn your palms out and rise up, reaching up and gather the energy of the sky and the sun and bring it to your heart. Then gather the energy of all of us here, the yes, that we are together in community and bring that to your heart. Then gather the energy of the earth, that which nourishes us and bring that to your heart. Now stretch up again, grasp your right wrist in your left hand. Inhale, reaching up. Exhale, tilt, opening up your right rib cage. Breathe here for just one moment. And then inhale up, switch wrists. Exhale towards your left. It's actually your right. Okay, inhale. Float your arms down. And now, come into cactus arms. Allow your hands to drop and rise and drop and rise. Bring your elbows together, finding your center line. Bring your hands to heart center. Turn your palms to the screen, then towards the earth. With a nice exhale, whoosh. Again, finding your center line. Bring your hands to your heart. Turn out, turn down. Exhale, 
And now bring your hands to clasp behind your waist. Inhale and draw your arms away from your body. Exhale, release. Inhale, draw your arms away. And exhale, release. Float your arms up. Take a moment to do whatever dance you need to do just in this moment. And the last movement is a forward bend. Place your hands above your knees. Take a deep inhale and exhale. Allow the body to drop down. Reaching to your comfort level, lowering softly, kindly. And then place your hands above your knees, roll up your spine, placing your hands at heart center and reach out to the world, the sky, to us and to the earth. Thank you so much. Thank you, Emily, that's beautiful. It feels so good to come into come into our bodies, certainly to, to this one for me. So thank you, thank you so much. I would invite you if you'd like to, anyone who'd like to just share what came up for you in the, uh, in the chat box. Um, we, um, I, I, I typically uh, save it and print it out. And so feel free if you wanna share anything or if you have any questions, if you have any suggestions, please feel free to, to, to use the chat, uh, chat box for that. Um, I'm thinking that um, maybe just time-wise, uh, what would make most sense is um, in case folks want to, want to share anything, want to write anything in the chat, maybe we could have one person that feels they'd like to share something or ask a question or whatever, please feel free to raise your hand either literally or through one of the icons in here or through the, um, through the, the uh, you can click on a button somewhere that says raise hand, I think. Oh. On the... <laughs> yeah. Do we have somebody? Rachel has a question or comment. So, who does? Rachel. I do, Rachel. Rachel, yeah, go ahead, Rachel. Um, so we had someone in our group from upstate New York and um, we were talking about how we came to find this class. And we are hoping that when things go back to normal, if they do go back to normal and we meet in a physical space again, that you will continue to offer the online option through live streaming if possible so that more people can join and just seeing that one positive thing has come out of all this yeah. that people have been able to join the community from afar. Yeah, and absolutely Rachel. Um it's one of the it is one of the saving graces and silver linings of the uh of this going online that that so many people who wouldn't be able to join us you know on a weekly basis from California or New York or Midwest or South or whatever can join us so that's been a really great thing and uh, I have every intention of doing exactly what you're suggesting you know even after a couple of months I th it was a kind of you know, the, the light bulb went on in, I think, a number of our heads and saying, oh, yeah, we need to keep this going even when we do go back. So it'll just be a logistical question. Um, it's, uh, it's IMCW, which is the kind of overall sponsor of the class, is not going to be having classes, I think it's till August, if I recall. Um, so 
will we'll remain virtual till then. And then when we do go back, my intention is very much to do what you're suggesting, you know, have a class and have, you know, a, a laptop and, and everything that we're doing here. Um, we have some great um, wizard, wizard, wizards of technology, including Nick and others, who have been very helpful in terms of all of these things. And Glenn, who isn't with us every week, but is behind the scenes, it's really great helping put these on the, these recordings online. So we have a number of people help in the tech area. So yes, very much, very much get your message and agree with it and plan to do that. So thank you for sharing that. Is that, that, is that good? Is that what you wanted to hear? Yes. <laughs> Great. So what we'll do, we'll, we'll um, as I say, feel free if anyone would like to add, put anything in the, uh, in the chat. Um, let's just have a short uh, meditation to, to finish our time together. So if you'd like to take some moments, a couple of moments to Find your posture. Let the attention come inward. Kind of dropping out of the thinking mode and just bringing your awareness down into the body. Feeling the contact with the chair or the surface beneath you. Letting the breath help you settle and arrive in whatever way is, is useful to you right now. Maybe just connecting with the breath or taking a couple of deeper breaths. The breath is a great resource, a great ally for us in our meditation, whether as a focus for awareness or as a as a way of helping us calm and settle and arrive again. So bringing a, a receptive awareness to whatever is present for you in the body and the heart the mind, the spirit, the environment. Whatever you're sensing, making space for whatever is here. welcoming any guests that are present, anything that's visiting right now. Allowing this moment to be just as it is, coming and going. Inviting a an attitude, a quality of yes to whatever is here.
See how it feels to say yes to what you might typically say no to. Either actively push away or just disconnect from, if you can do that. That's sometimes our strategy. Just go into something else. The mind goes off somewhere else or we do something else. So the invitation to stay, stay with what's calling for attention and say yes to what's present. If you're feeling bored, does that change at all when you say yes to this feeling that we call boredom? You might take a moment as we come towards the end of our time together to appreciate your own effort today. Appreciate yourself creating this space, this clearing in the dense forest of, of your life, of our lives. And just to be able to sit in the stillness and the silence and to open to what's arising and see what might unfold, what might come from this willingness to be with our experience. Perhaps there's some understanding, some insight, some clarity that might inform your day, your practice, your life. You might give a moment to think about and reflect on your intentions going into the week ahead or the time ahead? Is there anything that you'd like to pay closer attention to? Give, give some energy to maybe cultivating a quality of kindness or generosity or a willingness to be with what is. Maybe to cultivate some different habits, daily habits, whatever comes up for you, whatever. Is there something that's calling for attention? Is there something that's calling to be, to be let go of? and appreciating us all together today, practicing together, supporting each other through our practice. You might send a, a wish of loving kindness out to everyone here. Maybe gratitude for everyone's support. You 
Wishing everyone well. May you be safe, peaceful, happy, free from harm. Maybe letting your your intentions and your wishes go out into the wider world. So, so much suffering, so much division. So much conflict, inner and outer. I'm sending a wish of loving kindness out to all who are suffering. to all beings. I finished with this poem uh, by Danusha Lameris. It's called Thinking. Don't you wish they would stop? All the thoughts swirling around in your head. Bees in a hive, dancers tapping their way across the stage. I should rake the leaves in the carport, buy Christmas lights. Was there really life on Mars? What will I cook for dinner? I walk up the driveway, put out the garbage bins. I should stop using plastic bags. Visit my friend whose husband just left her for the Swiss Swedish nanny. I wish I hadn't said Patrick's painting looked ominous. Maybe that's why he hasn't called. Does the car need oil again? There's a hole in the ozone the size of Texas and everything seems to be speeding up. Come, let's stand by the window and look out at the light on the field. Let's watch how the clouds cover the sun and almost nothing stirs in the grass. So thank you, thank you all for, thank you all for your practice today. And it's been a, a joy to be together.